in total revenue service rs tax news avoid the rush president's day marks peak time period for calls use irs online tools in february to avoid delays get tax help avoid the rush yes i know irs much like my last office assistant you just want my money but don't want to have to actually talk to me i do quite appreciate the online tools though by which i assume you mean like a website and just so you know, I, I happen to have a very nice WordPress website myself over here that you guys might want to take a look at at some point if you want. And I certainly wouldn't want to call in and disturb all those new people who you were going to hire with all that money you got from the Inflation Reduction Act so that you could use them to answer phones that which would somehow reduce like inflation or something. Plus... I don't want to have to call in because I'm sure you have many women over 35 years old answering phones over there. And according to Don Lemon's logic, they're way past their prime to be answering phones. This whole talk about age makes me uncomfortable. I think that I think it's the wrong road to go down. She says people, you know, politicians or something are not in their prime. Nikki Haley isn't in her prime. Sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s what are you that's talking? not wait I, that's not according to me prime for what past her prime as if being president is the same as running for like miss america or something he's like come on everyone knows all women are ranked on a universal scale starting from one to ten and the average woman's score goes down after like 25 or so everyone knows just google it just google it you know uh, it depends. I mean, it's just like prime. If you look it up, it'll. If you look, if you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say twenties, thirties, and forties. I don't necessarily. Forties. Oh, I got another. I'm not saying decade. I agree with that. So I think she has to be careful about. Are you suggesting, Mr. Lemon, that only the only way a woman could be president is if she's at her peak physical attractiveness? For shame saying that well, you know politicians aren't in their prime you need to qualify are you talking about prime for like child caring or although if i knew nothing more about a candidate other than she was an attractive woman i'd certainly vote for her over president biden but still you can't say that you can't say that man i mean honestly these days you can't even say a woman could only win a beauty contest if she was at her peak physical attractiveness hell you can't you, you can't even say a fat man who refused to even have a shave or tuck in his beer belly for five minutes couldn't win a beauty contest, you know? I mean, or at least mo most people can't say that. I'm sure, I'm sure Don will be fine over there, but. Talking don't shoot about the message I'm just saying president. what the facts are. Google it, everybody at home. <laughs> when is a woman in her prime? It says 20s, 30s, and 40s. Any case. Honestly, if you really want to increase productivity at the IRS, maybe try Don's advice and fire every woman over 30 years old, replacing them with men over 80 years old. And that'll fix it. Or maybe Don's logic is generated from a very narrow perspective, resulting in some ridiculous conclusions when taking reality into consideration. And I'm just saying Nikki Haley should be careful about saying that politicians are not in their prime and they need to be in their prime when they serve because she wouldn't be in her prime according to Google? You know, Google or whatever it is. For example, if Hillary Clinton ran for president, I guarantee we'll hear Don say at some point something like, yeah, you know, although she's 972, outpacing the age of even Methuselah, the lines on her face outnumbering the rings on the largest sequoia tree in the world, no worries. Because, like, women live longer than men, you know? I mean, honestly... So, sometimes I get the feeling the deck is stacked over here, I swear. Why, Ike, whatever do you mean? Maybe poker's just not your game. IR 2023-28, February 16, 2023, Washington. With the nation entering a peak period for filing taxes, the Internal Revenue Service urges taxpayers to use online tools to get answers to quickly and avoid phone delays during a traditional peak period for IRS phone lines around President's Day. So obviously the IRS has been having issues with calling in uh, and long hold times and all the rest of that. So President's Day weekend, when many people prepare their taxes, historically marks a peak period for the IRS phone lines. During the two-week February period following President's Day, the IRS recommends turning first 
to the self-help tools available online on irs.gov to avoid delays. So it's probably good advice because obviously if you do try to call in the IRS website on just the standard 800 number, it can take some time to get through. And oftentimes, especially considering the fact that they've hired all these new individuals or they're, we're supposed to hire a bunch of new people, possibly putting them on the phone lines, they might not have a whole lot of experience in terms of how to deal with people uh, in any case at this point in time because it has been not much time since the for them to be training. Uh, so you might be better off even if you were to get a hold of someone to basically find the answer if you can on the IRS website. So, quote, the IRS continues to see improvements this tax season compared to previous years, including better phone service, end quote, said IRS Acting Commissioner Doug O'Donnell. Quote, we were always uh, always see a significant surge in phone traffic around President's Day with the calendar uh, advancing millions of people turn their attention to taxes during this period to avoid potential delays. We encourage people to check irs.gov. That's irs.gov, irs.gov, the IRS website first, uh, which can provide much the same information instantly to taxpayers in quote. So easy to use and available anytime, the IRS website can help taxpayers file and pay taxes and find information about their accounts, determine eligibility for tax credits, and get answers to tax questions. There's links to all that here. And while we're talking about websites, I do have my own WordPress website that links to like a Thinkific website. And we have stuff like that too. We got like articles and stuff and you can like learn stuff and we've got courses and everything. So check it out man check it out and when it comes to when it comes time to file taxpayers are encouraged to e-file and choose direct deposit there's a link to that here to get their refunds as quickly as possible so they want to make sure everything is nice and automated we don't want to have you know that we don't want to have all those new that money they spent on the inflation reduction act that went to the irs supposedly to hire a bunch of people supposedly to get on the phone lines we don't want to you know overstress them or anything because maybe they didn't maybe they just spent the money on cocktails instead and it's you know so whatever so available irs tools to help taxpayers through tax filing season the irs recommends trying the following self-help resources available to taxpayers 24 7 for a smooth and easy tax filing experience you got irs.gov offers a variety of online tools to help taxpayers answer common tax questions for example taxpayers can search the interactive tax assistance tax topics and frequently asked questions to find answers there, so there's links to all that my blog has like topics that we talk about too so that's another place you can you can go there and look at look at my blog instead of the irs blog so you got the earned income tax assistant that's the eitc there's a link to that here allows taxpayers to check eligibility for this valuable credit Taxpayers can also calculate how much EITC earned income tax credits they may get and find answers to EITC questions. IRS online account gives taxpayers secure access to personal tax information, including balance payments, tax records with previous years, adjusted gross income information. My website on the Think of Fake website, you can have your own account there too. And you can like have your own, you know, you can sort your own courses and content stuff on that one too so you might want to check that out just out just you know as a parallel to what we're talking about so the irs offers basic information in several languages to help taxpayers get the information they need to file a federal tax return and pay any tax owed so we have you know language you know you can like google you can google translate now uh languages so so you can check that out on my website too so IRS free file, there's a link to that here, provides eligible taxpayers who want to prepare their own returns, free tax preparation and the volunteer. So the free file, we actually have links to our website too that also talks about like third party, like businesses that offer software that might have a free option to it, which is kind of like what the IRS is like website, their little blog does that too here. So you can go there. And then basically they tell you about these other great businesses that actually provide, you know, services and whatnot, the, 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 the third party tax software. And so you, then you can link to their website and get the actual stuff uh, that, that provided by the, you know, the evil capitalistic market people that actually made the software and whatnot. 
So and then you've got the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, the VITA, or Tax Counseling for the Elderly, the TCE program. So you've got links to those. Offer free tax help for uh, certified volunteers at thousands of sites across the country. That is actually an in-person thing, something that's a step beyond a blog, a website, right? You can, you can actually help. They, they might help you to actually do your taxes. So if you know, if you want to do, go in person and look at one of these volunteer services and people volunteering their time for that, uh, that could be a good resource. The Where's My Refund tool. There's a link to that here on irs.gov and they've got an irs to go app even. So they've got their like little blog thing here, but they also have an app. That's how you know when when like companies are super cool. I don't even have an app. I'm not even there yet because like, so whatever. So that allows taxpayers to check the status of their refund within 24 hours after the IRS accepts their e-file tax return. Where's my refund updates once every 24 hours, usually overnight. So taxpayers don't need to check more than once a day. So if you're checking the where's my refund every like hour or something, then I, you know, we have to point out you've got a problem. You shouldn't be doing that. You've got like a tick or something. It's probably causing you stress, panic. You got, you know, you got to let it go. Let it go once or twice a day. Once or twice a day. More than that, then, then, you know, relax. Just relax. Tax law prevents the IRS from issuing refunds uh, for include the EITC and or additional child tax credit before February 15th. So if you have those two credits because of the fact those are going to be the credits most likely for fraudsters to try to fraud a tate on, to try to fraudulate on. Then uh, they have to, the, so that's going to delay your refund a bit because they need to try to get some more time to catch those people possibly, which they probably won't. They'll just give them money and say, whatever. Biden don't care. Right? They say, ah, it's a little bit more money, whatever. It's just throw money at stuff. Stuff will be good. But no, not to worry. Where's my refund should provide an update refund status for most early filers by February 18th and the EITC ACTC related refunds should be available in taxpayers bank accounts or on debit cards by February 28th uh, if they choose direct deposit and there are no other issues with their tax returns. So if you notice that there was a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs in that sentence, you would be correct. A lot of qualifications. A lot of if kind of kind of formulations so so you don't might, you might not want to like depend on that date for sure you, you don't want to be like spending the money before you get the money because it's quite because of all those ifs and qualifiers so the tax withholding estimator there's a link to that here it can help taxpayers determine the right amount of tax to have withheld from a paycheck so you can go there to kind of help you to estimate what your tax withholdings should be it's kind of late to do that now for 2022 but it's something you might want to do for 2023. Taxpayers should submit a new form W-4 to their employer if an adjustment is needed. So usually you try to file your 2022 tax return at this point in time, right? And then you're going to determine based on that, help you to determine if uh, you, you need to adjust your withholdings. In other words, if you owed a lot of taxes or you had a big refund, then that could be an indication that you would want to adjust your withholdings. But because the tax code is changing so often and people's income situations are changing quite rapidly, you might also simply want to go to an estimator tool, which you could use tax software to do, or the tax withholding estimator is getting better as being basically tax software to kind of calculate what your withholding should be for 2023. So then you can make your adjustments and then fill out the W-4, which is telling the employer what they need to do. So the IRS service guide, there's a link to that here. And the let us help you page on irs.gov can help taxpayers find additional ways to get help. For those who need to talk to someone, the IRS, we need to talk, I need to talk to someone. The IRS has hired an additional 5,000 customer service representatives. See, I knew they were, they were supposed to do that to help staff. Uh, it's toll free customer service line. So the IRS taxpayer assistance centers now, I just want to point out where it says for those who need to talk that I think, I mean, I know it doesn't really, it's not really specific on this point, but I think they mean talking about taxes, right? If you just want to kind of shoot the breeze, probably not the way, not the place to go that, but if you have tax information, so IRS taxpayer assistance center, that's the TACs 
are another uh, resource individuals who need more than online tools or the IRS toll-free customer service line to solve a tax matter. Anyone who needs face-to-face -face service should make an appointment. There's a link to that here. Or check for special Saturday hours. There's a link to that here uh, before visiting. Missing information? Taxpayers should call employer for missing form W-2. So if you don't have your W-2s, you don't have your 1099s, the IRS is going to be saying, hey, don't come to us. Go to the employer to find that stuff. Now, if you can't get it, then at some point in time, these forms are given to the federal government. So you might be able to get transcripts from the IRS, but you might not be able to get them yet for 2022. So you, what you really want to do is go to the source and then figure it out. If you have prior years, for example, that you're trying to reconstruct, you didn't do your taxes for 2021 or something or prior, then then you might be saying, I don't want to go back to my employer because maybe they disappeared or they're closed or they're crazy people and I'm trying to avoid them or something. I don't know. Then then you might want to go and get your transcripts from uh, the IRS. You might be able to do so by logging into your account on irs.gov. But the first place to go typically would be the employer, the people issuing the W-2s and whoever issued, say, 1099s to get it from the source. So uh, those who did not receive a Form W-2 wage and tax statement from one or more employers by January 31st should contact the uh, issuer to inform them of the missing form. Those who do not get a response from an issuer must still file on time and may need to use Form 4852 substitute for Form W-2 wage and tax statement or Form 1099-R distributions from pension, annuities, retirement, profit sharing plans, IRAs, insurance contracts, etc. There's links to all that stuff here. For a copy of Form 1099 or 1042 to report Social Security income, visit the Social Security Administration's website. These forms can be downloaded through My Social Security account. It's fast and secure, they say. They're, they're saying that. Okay, so there's links to all that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.